When AJ Styles made his shock debut in the 2016 Royal Rumble, expectations were sky high. He was a made man, a certified legend of the industry already and widely considered one of the best to ever do it. AJ was arguably the biggest star in the world not working for WWE in the early to mid 2010s and finally he had arrived. He had become a staple in both TNA and Ring of Honor, became leader of the Bullet Club in his legendary New Japan run and now he had a chance to shine in front of the largest audience yet in WWE. He lasted just under half an hour in a huge establishing performance, which would kickstart an incredible eight-year run to date. He's a two-time WWE champion, the second reign being in the top 10 lengthiest reigns in WWE history. He's become a Grand Slam champion, but considering he was one of the biggest stars of the second half of the 2010s in WWE, if you just watched WrestleManias... Perhaps you'd start feeling a little underwhelmed. Despite his huge debut, the Mania title scene plans were locked in for 2016 and AJ would not immediately go into a title feud. He instead would be placed in some TV matches to find his feet. He, he ended up in a babyface versus babyface matchup at the time, facing Chris Jericho with a match at Fastlane. They ended up building a friendship slash tag team of sorts. Everyone remembers the horrible name Y2AJ, but hey, at least it's remembered. Jericho turned heel after they lost the tag team title match against the New Day, and there we have our match for WrestleMania. I mean, what could go wrong? A veteran of the WWE style in Jericho against experienced, but learning the WWE ropes in, in styles. We were ready for a great match, and the match was decent, and a good way to build AJ into a bigger star and now a more familiar star, right? Wrong. Uh, Jericho won in a, in a bizarre booking decision, a common theme with Mania 32. So this one is remembered as a sort of meh build, a mediocre match and a wrong winner to put the cherry on top. Bad start. But AJ's 2016 is remembered as one of his best years, so it's disappointing this match was just so... Meh. So we were all ready for next year's Mania 2017, WrestleMania 33, where Styles could be planned around and have a more prominent match. He was the WWE Champion in late 2016 and early 2017. He had some great matches and back and forth rivalries against the likes of Dean Ambrose, John Cena, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton. The list goes on and with such high profile matches now possible for him at WrestleMania, it was quite the turn when he randomly attacked his KFA boss, the SmackDown GM at the time, Shane McMahon, setting up their match for WrestleMania. But this match was good. Maybe even the best of that year's Mania. But AJ deserved more than a side story match with a non-full-time wrestler. And in hindsight, it's another disappointing use of the phenomenal one on the grandest stage of them all. Alright, so 2018. After some mixed opinions on his previous booking around Mania, everyone seemed fairly united on this one. Styles versus Nakamura in the main event of WrestleMania. Two stars at the top of their game, a rich history across promotions, all culminating in what was set to be a WrestleMania match to remember. Nakamura had won the Rumble and there was our match. It was a lock for an incredible match. Or was it? It's been touted as the biggest disappointment in WrestleMania history or an underwhelming mess amongst of a harsh criticism. While it would be a lie to say the match itself was outright bad, there were some fun spots, some good counters, some enjoyable moments, and these two were still fantastic performers. However, they did just feel like they were going through the motions. There was no proper story. We were at the end of a nearly seven hour long show, and it just never really got out of second or third gear and into great match category. This is downplayed further considering the expectations placed on it going in. So, while AJ had walked out WWE Champion at WrestleMania and main evented for the first time, now is forever remembered as a hugely underwhelming match and a main event no one really cares to recall. It was just an okay match. Alright, another Mania, another big matchup for Styles. WrestleMania 35 in 2019 brought a Styles vs. Orton and for his third year in a row, Stars came out victorious at the showcase of the Immortals. I'll be honest, I literally had to go back and rewatch all the recaps on, on, the, on the match because I just have zero memory of this match. And it was, it was well, another year where we would get an underwhelming match from Styles, despite a pretty good year for him. The build was good, but short. And 
Looking back, you can't help but feel more could have been done to get fans more invested in this matchup. It had so much potential. Like, why are we not capitalising? Randy Orton, AJ Styles, 2019. It was a rough year, but where these two were still major players and putting them up against each other at WrestleMania, it should have been great. But unfortunately, we can't always get what we want. And this match was just underwhelming. Like, I feel like I, got, I don't really have much to say on it. You have to go back and watch it. And if you like it, I mean, cool. But for me, it just was nothing standout. All right, so moving on to match five in AJ Styles' WrestleMania career. And it was WrestleMania 36. 2020. Everyone knows what happened in 2020. We don't need to talk about WrestleMania 36. It was behind closed doors. And it was the first night we had a two-night WrestleMania. And this was the main event of night one. So, so we can call it the main event, but not the official main event. Or however you want to do it. It was the main event. It was just the main event of night one in what on paper would be another huge addition to Styles' star-studded WrestleMania matchup history. And while the match wasn't really built around AJ, of course, it was promoted as Taker's last match and the retirement of a legend like Taker would, of course, be prioritised. But AJ would have plenty of opportunity to shine here. And to be fair to him, he did. It's difficult to get a measure on in-ring quality because this match just wasn't for that, but it was a great match. It was entertaining, it was cinematic and did the job to create an entertaining match when there was no crowd. But this would only end in loss for AJ Styles. The dead man literally buried AJ Styles, dragging him into an empty grave to win his very last match. Again, really difficult to get a measure on in-ring quality or what the match would have been if it was in front of a crowd, but... Half the job is entertainment, and they provided an excellent, entertaining match to close night one of the weirdest WrestleMania ever. So props to them. We finally have a big thumbs up on his resume. But now I must move on and talk about Styles' most random match in his WrestleMania career. Yeah, he had, he had a Boneyard match against The Undertaker where he was buried, but that wasn't his weirdest match. His weirdest match was a tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Titles versus The New Day, where he was teaming with... A moss. So we're back in front of a crowd and this is what we've got for Styles after he main evented with Undertaker last year. Alright, so Styles has been part of tag teams and stables and whatever, but hardly any team is as random as AJ Styles and Omos, who, who by the way, at this point, hadn't even wrestled yet. He was going to in-ring debut at Mania and he was going to team with AJ Styles. This also marked Styles' only non-single match at WrestleMania. Maybe we knew we were out of the prime, but not giving him a singles match, that feels like a slap in the face. It lasted less than 10 minutes, and much of the focus was on the in-ring debut of Amos. Styles was continuously overpowered by Xavier Woods and Kofi. This hurt me as a Styles fan. The whole program was built around Styles wanting to become a Grand Slam champion, and that was about it. So the in-ring match was just mid and for a star like AJ Styles to be doing this at Mania I know they won the tag team titles and he became you know the Grand Slam champion but like come on man so another underwhelming match maybe not his fault but it's another miss I want to forget now we get to his most recent Wrestlemania match we're back on track AJ is out of the tag division and he is locked in to face Edge in a first time matchup dream match between two of the biggest names in the industry. Styles is back to being a face. We had the intriguing heel edge of the start of building his faction and everyone was ready for a banger. It wasn't exactly like a super red hot feud. I mean, this was far removed from some sort of blood feud. Edge basically cut a few run of the mill promos and AJ sold an injury angle that felt more like a mandatory story plot point in the attempt to add some depth rather than anything people actually cared about. But the match was going to be good, right? So perhaps the, the burden of expectation was too heavy. And again, the reaction to this match, similar to the feeling coming out of his match with Shinsuke at WrestleMania 34, was a feeling that it could have and maybe should have been more than what it was. And this was not a bad match by any means. They were just so busy trying to create something epic that it felt like it just lost any sense of personality. It was just a bit boring. It was by no means a bad match, but it was so obviously an attempt at putting on a classic that it sort of just overstayed its welcome and forgot to actually push any boundaries which give you a great match. Edge ended up taking the win with the help of Damian Priest, and that was that. Was that. So that's all we've seen since Styles' debut back in 2016. 
a real mixed bag. A lot of disappointment both in his booking and then in ring. AJ remains one of the top guys in the world and his career cannot be understated. He will forever be remembered as a legend in WWE and obviously in the world of wrestling. But maybe through no fault of his own, he just unfairly doesn't have the WrestleMania catalogue to back it up. Yeah, of course. Despite him being firmly in the upper echelons of the WWE almost every year since his debut. AJ was also ruled out with injury before WrestleMania 39 last year, so he didn't have a match. But it looks like he'll be all good for Mania 40 next month in Philly, where he looks likely to be taking on the megastar LA Knight. So let's just hope AJ, who's been killing his new heel role at the moment, can provide us with a banger. The story is already looking good, so maybe I'll have to make a revised version of this video when Mania time comes around. Let's see. Thanks for watching guys, I was having some chats recently about Star's new heel role and it got me thinking about that Shinsuke main event at Wrestlemania 34 and how underwhelming this guy's Mania career has been. Considering the level of stardom, it's just underwhelming, so I hope you enjoy my little deep dive in. If you want more wrestling content like this, I've got lots more to come. You can follow me on Twitter too, at WrestleLogic. Like, subscribe, all of that, I'll see you in the next one.